Good morning, Drummond Island. Good morning. <laughs> and I think, I think today, and you guys on Facebook, you need to skedaddle on up to Drummond Island because I think we're peaking today, don't you think? With the colors? <laughs> don't you think we're kind of in that peak zone? It's They're beautiful. really beautiful. I took the dog down the street, you know, for our little morning run, and there's like this arch. Eldon, isn't there like this arch of maples over, you know, as you're working down towards Matt's house? There's like this arch of maples growing over. It's so beautiful. Just amazing. Yep, heaven on earth, Drummond Island. That's us. So, just a few quick announcements. Uh, this is, I can't believe it, though we're almost through October. We had a wonderful soup supper, by the way. Those of you who did, weren't able to make it, um, I had your helpings and your dessert. <laughs> uh, but it was a wonderful time at the Buxton's house. Yay. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, going on to other announcements. No. <laughs> okay, we did the annual... Men Against Women Gestures game. Oh, how did we do? And the women, it was a close game. It was a <laughs> really close game. Nip and tuck right up to the end. The women edged the men just by a little bit. So let's hear it for the ladies. Yay! Yay. No, we don't, no, we're not about the past. Jesus said th those who look back on the past are not fit for the kingdom of God. So anyway, um, this is, October is almost done. We've got a newsletter coming, November newsletter coming in a week. So if any of you guys, you guys on Facebook or anybody here, uh, if you have a poem or reflection, something that might be good, you talk to Jesus about it. If Jesus gives you a head nod and it might be helpful for others, please submit it. We, do, we are limited in space because it's two sides of a regular page. But so I may do a little editing, but do if you have a poem or some life experience that you think might help somebody else in their journey, send it in. Uh, digitally would be helpful if you email it in and I can cut and paste. Uh, other things that are going on, we've got uh, Samaritan's Purse. We're getting close. Second Sunday in November is the collection day for the shoe boxes. And again, you guys on Facebook and YouTube, you can do this too. Go to SamaritansPurse.org and you can check out Operation Christmas Child. You can order a shoebox. You can, you can do all sorts of things, make donations. So uh, we're coming up on that. And to give a special presentation, because right behind me here, look at this display. Who does this? It's so beautiful and well done. So Sue's going to give us an announcement on that. Let's give her a hand. Whoa, Sue, go for it. So what I, what I wanted to do, I wanted to thank people who already donated, because we had, you can see, we already got quite a bit of donations. And what we were originally hoping to do is get a bunch of stuff. We would have a pizza packing party, and then we would have these gazillion boxes and send them all off to Cedarville. to fill some of the boxes that we already have. So I was looking online to see what the requirements, what sort of things that we needed, like Scott said, through that, that website. I didn't realize they, they kind of like have like 11 things in these boxes, which is kind of, kind of a lot. But if you do pens and pencils and crayons and, and um, you can do little cards, they, they like to have personal items, washcloths, sunglasses, nail clippers, stuff I didn't even think about, uh, scissors, rulers, Play-Doh, and so they want you to have a personal item, they want you to have like school items, and then they wanted to do toys, small little toys, and you could do slinkies or jump ropes, um, and then a wow gift. So that was like a stuffed, stuffed toy or a doll, or uh, they have soccer balls that they like it with the pump, so they could be flat and fit in these boxes. I did one with tools, which doesn't quite fit in here, um, and sewing kits. But we don't we don't have enough for boxes. So I guess what my my plea is is that if you happen to be in the store and you want and you can come up and see, we've got a ton of pencils. We have a ton of hats for boys. Um, we have gloves and a couple slippers. 
but if you want to pick up some stuff you can maybe november one which is a friday at two o'clock we can have cookies and coffee and we can what we have we can pack in what we need we can put on there but we can get it ready to go because like you said it has to be out november 10th so where where will that be location making party here here the coffee and here at the church okay but an fyi this is was such a lovely thing that someone donated but they can't have toothpaste they can't have shampoos they can't have any liquids and they can't have any food candy or gum so even though these are really really good and i don't know about how i can take the toothbrush out and still not have it covered carefully anyway so i just wanted to know that if anybody has stuff and they wanted to donate uh 10 bucks goes in each box so if you didn't um want to buy anything if you just want to donate it financially or if you wanted someone else to do the shopping Gary Deal is really excited about going shopping. It helps out his son. <laughs> All right. So we have a shopping uh, adventure <laughs> planned. So um, just so you know that we can get that done and maybe have a little shopping for our church. Who? November 1st? November 1st. Two, Two o'clock. o'clock. Here. Here. Okay. Coffee, cookies, and packing. And we'll put it on the website. So if you guys forget about things, not that we ever forget things, but uh, it'll be on the website. November 1st. Uh, Pray over it, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I want to encourage you to remember these kids, most of these places are pretty rural. So to buy quality gifts, to really get gifts that aren't going to, you know, what what a fun surprise, you know, where they open up the gift and the wheels fall off their little car or whatever, you know, and they go, oh. So uh, what you're about to see is a video, though, a video of happy faces. And this is the one that makes me cry. So get the tissues ready. Greg's going to show you a video. Here's what your shoebox can do. Let the little children come to me. Don't forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Operation Christmas Child is a way for the little children to come to Almighty God. That is the best gift of all, is becoming part of God's family. The mission of Operation Christmas Child never changes. Children are coming to Jesus, children are being discipled, and children are taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. These children are brave and bold, not afraid, and they're not ashamed of the gospel. They're trained and equipped to go out and share their faith with others, and many times in areas where it's an unreached people group. The Bible tells us the time is now. Let them come, Jesus said, let them come. They're coming. They're coming by the millions. Every single box represents the life of a young boy, a young girl, who will be touched by the gospel. Jesus has come to give them light, that they do not need to be in the darkness, that they have hope, that they have joy. And it is our prayer that this glorious light of the gospel will flow among the nations and will fill our land with the knowledge of the glory of God. The Lord God Almighty desires to fulfill His redemptive plan for mankind in and through each of us and all of us. All of us are children of God. We share this incredible opportunity to take the gospel truly to the ends of the earth by gathering children to Jesus. I believe this year for Operation Christmas Child, this may be the most important year, most important opportunity that we'll ever have to reach children in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that God will use these shoebox gifts to make a difference in the children's life for eternity.
And we have this Friday, um, uh, we're going to have a time of prayer and praise together yeah. at 6.30, is that? 6.30 for an hour. And then we're going to, there's <coughs> going to be community with other churches on the island. So that's what I'm excited about. We're going to have time of prayer and times of praise. And then um, several of the pastors of other <coughs> churches are going to uh, pray along with us and, and join us in that time. And so I think it's a great opportunity to, to show community together. Um, we have so much more in common with all these other churches than we than what separate us. Yeah. And so Amen. I'm really excited to uh, um, for that this, this coming <coughs> Friday. Uh, so I hope to see you there at 6.30 Friday here. This is a first, folks. Thank you for your prayers. Amen. So we sing in joy this morning. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. <coughs>
strength who rises we wait upon the lord we will wait upon the lord we will wait upon the lord <coughs> Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are. Draw me to your side. 
time together to just love you with each Mm. other in this community here and um, open us to hear your word um, to make a difference in our lives we thank you so much for the time and um, (coughs) bless us and bless those who are listening in Jesus name amen amen So I have, for you guys, two kind of strange stories this morning. They're short, but they're strange. They're unusual. The first story comes from Dr. Barbara Holmes. She is a, an attorney. She is an African-American theologian. And she is an activist and Quite an amazing person, Dr. Barbara Holmes, and she tells the first story. In more recent years, I've had my own dance with the divine. My health declined suddenly and precipitously when a hip operation was postponed for a year because of other health concerns. I pondered in despair. I would be wheelchair bound for a whole year? It was at that moment that God asked, may I have this dance? (laughs) Dance? I was outraged. What do you mean dance? I can't even walk. The answer came back. 
Your spirit knows the steps. Breathe. Relax. Breathe. I let go of my fears, my concerns, and melted into the arms of a loving Savior as we danced to an ethereal music of the heart that neither of us could hear. You don't need to hear music. Life has a rhythm of its own. And when you're out of sync, you must get realigned with the rhythm of life. The second story comes from my, my past. And I've talked before about the significance in my spiritual journey of the death of my first wife from lupus disease, central nervous system lupus. Oh, and let's let our Sunday school people go. God bless you guys. <laughs> you can hear it on Facebook. No. Uh, so going back to the year 1989, January of 1989, and this is, just, this is just a couple of weeks after Barb had passed away. So I'm fresh in the clutches of a good, solid grief journey. And I meet with the bishop at the time, this was my first church, and the bishop and I had been at loggerheads <laughs> on a number of different issues, and that's much more, too much history to go into. But in this one instance, I remember, it's like, you know how you remember things with crystal clarity? I can see my little, my little office and the bishop sitting next, opposite me, not three feet away, and we're looking eye to eye, sitting in chairs. He, is just, he has just experienced a divorce, a su kind of surprise. This is the bishop of the diocese. His wife divorced him. And he's in the throes of a fresh grief journey himself. And both of us, in our pain, for the first time in the three and a half, four years that we worked together, for the first time, we see eye to eye and we see heart to heart. And with tears in our eyes, we just, we just, we connect. We connect in a way that only God, only God could, could do. But then what's really happened, what's really, the strange part of this story is I look at him with tears in my eyes and I said, this is so strange, this is so weird. And he looks at me and I said, I said to him, I have never felt so alive than at this very moment. I've never felt so alive but at this very moment. I believe that there is a fire of God in the heart of every human being. And I used to think of the image of God before as something that was kind of like stamped on our soul. Like there's this God tattoo on us, you know, we go, oh, there it is, you know, and every once in a while we kind of rediscover it when we get off the path. Oh, there it is. I don't think so anymore. For me, the image of God is much more like a blazing fire that is deep within us, an invisible blazing fire, alive and wild and unpredictable in some ways. Um, you never know what that fire is going to do, but it is absolutely indistinguished. Um, unex you can't extinguish it, okay? <laughs> you can't put it out, okay? You can throw water on it, throw sin on it, throw whatever you want to, but you cannot put out that fire. It is the very presence of God inside. And I believe that that fire, like any amazing flame, whether it's a campfire or whatever you have, or even just a candle flame, that it dances. Fire dances. It's never the same from one millisecond to the next. It's a dancing, alive, dynamic, powerful, wonderful, beautiful, inspiring fire of God that dances inside of every human heart. Remember the kids dancing? You know, the, the kids on you know the kids who are receiving their shoe boxes and they're going like this and all that. That's the spirit of God. To me, that's the spirit of God. You see that, that bouncing up and down and that joy. That's the spirit of God. And that's in every single one of us. 
And you can go through stuff, and you can go through emotional highs and lows, and go sideways in every which way, every circumstance. But that fire of God is still there. You can't put it out. The devil can't put it out. The world can't put it out. There's nothing in this world that can put it out. Paul calls it love at the end of Romans. Chapter 8 says that nothing can take that away. Nothing can extinguish that. That love of God, but it's a fire that burns hot and bright. And it's exciting and it's wonderful. And it's always there. He's always there within us. And so, when we're going through times where we don't know what the next step is going to be in our lives, we may be going through economic times or we're, we're between jobs or we don't have a job or whatever's going on and all sorts of stuff is starting to take place. Bad stuff, you know, we may lose things. Or health-wise, we don't know what the next step is. We don't, we don't know, doctors are kind of flirting around and not doing anything, or hospital systems, health systems are not doing anything, or, or whatever, things, things aren't panning out. And all sense of order in our lives is kind of crumbling down, falling down all around us. And that's when, just like with Dr. Barbara Holmes, God invites us, strangely enough, invites us, to dance. There are a lot of scriptures that talk about God moving us, carrying us, holding us, lifting us up, all sorts of things in the Bible. Uh, we've got uh, Psalm 139, one of my favorites, you know, where the Lord knows our waking, our getting up, and all this, and we are fearfully and wonderfully made. It's got some really juicy quotes in it, uh, Psalm 139. But particularly verses 7 through 10 is kind of cool. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Talking to God here. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there too. If I take the wings of the dawn and I dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will guide me. If I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me, and the light around me be turned to night, even the darkness is not dark to you, O Lord, and the night is as bright as the day, darkness and light are alike for you. I believe that when God extends God's hand, and you'll hear this again in Scripture in a little bit, but when God extends, I believe it's not one hand, but it's two hands. And that God invites us to a dance. Because God holds us up, lifts us up, and moves us in ways that we don't even know. We think we're gone, you know, and we're alone, and we're struggling all on our own. But the hand of God never leaves us or forsakes us. In Psalm 46, it's that wonderful, one, another one of my favorite places where it compares God with idols. And idols you have to carry and they're heavy, you know. And, and of course, idols aren't just stone and rock and stuff like that. I mean, any idol, idol that we hold on to, whether it's just mental in our minds, is heavy. It's burdensome. It really doesn't get us from point A to point B. But God, on the other hand, in Psalm 46... God says, ah, but I'm the one who carries you. I'm the one who lifts you up. Even to your old age, I will carry you. And now I think that it's not just God puts us like a backpack, you know, and he's walking along. I think God carries us by being the lead dancer. I think God is the lead dancer. But a lot of times we want to take the lead, right? Right? You know, I mean, we want to be the lead. I'm the lead dancer, you know. You don't know what you're talking about, God. You know, what do you know about dancing? <laughs> Some churches don't even allow that. What do you mean? So, you know, but God says, I'm the Lord of the dance. And I will carry you. I will move you along. Some other cool sp spots in, in Scripture. Matthew chapter 5, where you have the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor, blessed, you know, are the meek, and you know, blessed are all these, 
All these states where you find that your cup is empty. It's a, it's, it's a strange passage. In fact, read the whole Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 through 7. Um, it's, it's, it's got a strange theme to it, and that is when your cup is empty, when you're utterly depleted, blessed are you. Blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are you. Your cup, when your cup is empty, somehow, strangely, your life gains a fullness that you wouldn't have otherwise. So we experience that with uncertainty. When things are, the, the pathway is not clear, there's no map, we don't know what we're supposed to do, the choices are confusing, what are we supposed to do, where am we, I don't know. And we feel like the wisdom kind of goes eh, down the toilet, I mean, down the drain. And that's when God can move in some powerful ways and invites us to a dance. Dance always has direction to it. You're always moving somewhere. God's always moving you someplace. But there's that element of joy, and that's the strange thing about it. When Jesus talks about having joy, um, I give you joy, I give you peace, all these different kinds of things, these gifts, for I've overcome the world. And it's, there's this sense that I don't have to be dictated by all the stuff that's happening around me. I have a choice. I have a choice. And the only certain part is there's always the dance. There's always, always, always the dance. And yeah, I can leave the dance at any time, and I do, you know. I try to dance with myself, you know, or dance with some other idol, but it's kind of heavy, and it doesn't lead any place. And then I return back to the dance, the real dance. Romans 5, 1 through 5, that's another great one, where we find that we're, we're justified by faith in God, and that, remember, faith is just trusting. And when we have those moments, when we have those times when we can truly trust God, that even the difficulties and sufferings in our lives can become moments of experiencing, in verse 5, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, the refreshment of the Holy Spirit being poured out over us. And we realize that it wasn't my power that did this. It wasn't my spiritual acuity, you know, how great I am, you know, how close I am to Jesus. Thank God, praise the Lord. And, and it's not any of that. It's pure gift. And you find that one of the greatest gifts that you can give to God is your false sense of control. I mean, we do have choices in things but not the kind of control that our mind comes up with, where we can be pulling the strings and going, yeah, God, how you doing as my co-pilot? We doing okay? Oh, okay, great, great. And, and we're just, we think we're running things. The Bible says we devise plans, but what? God directs our paths in the dance. That's my addition, in the dance. And so, Psalm 77, this is an interesting one. Psalm 77, verse 19. There's, there's chaos that's happening. There's enemies all around. And it ends up by saying, Ah, but God walks over the waters, but his footsteps can't be seen. And you have to remember that for good Israelites, water most often... Water is a symbol of chaos. Water is a symbol of chaos. That's where Leviathan lives and all the mon sea monsters and crazy stuff. And water isn't predictable and, <clears throat> and you can sink. And that's why when, when you, know, you look at the chosen you know, and they go out, let's go out fishing. You know, wow, we're 200 yards from shore. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You know, I hope we catch some fish here. They didn't go far from shore, typically. 
And when Jesus says, well, let's go to the other side of the lake, we go, hey, I'll take a pass on that one. Water represented chaos to the Israelites most often. And when it says, but God walks on the water. God's above the chaos of your life. And like Peter, maybe better than Peter, you can walk with him too. Why? Because he's the lead dancer. And he'll lead you across the chaotic waters. It's a wonderful verse. I'll say that again. Psalm 77, verse 19, the Psalm of David. Then we come to, I think, the best psalm. When life is falling apart, when things are disintegrating, when you can't see your way clear past the tip of your nose, and it's all swirling around, Psalm 27 is for you. And to read that for us this morning, we've got Diane and Kirk. Come on up, let's give them a hand. Yay! The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why would I tremble? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart says to you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't <laughs> abandon me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the right path, for my enemies are waiting for me. Do not turn me over to the desires of my foes, for false uh, witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. <clears throat> Yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. And wait for the Lord. All right, thank you guys. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? And it presents to us a choice. Because in this psalm, the enemies are all around. It looks like disaster. It looks like the psalmist is done for. No possible escape. But the Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? All surrounded. And then in verse 4, One thing have I asked from the Lord, one thing that I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. And there's a focus change. Did you notice? There's a focus change from outward to inward. From outward circumstances to inward. And even in the worst of times, 
And it may not be right in the moment when we're in the hurricane, but there will come a moment when the hurricane is still present where we can do that focus change. There'll be a moment, a, a kairos moment, a perfect timing moment where there'll be an opportunity and it's almost like the, our spirit inside says, you have agency right now. You have the choice. You can switch focus. And that's the essential focus, is to focus from the outward circumstances, no matter how depth-bringing uh, depth they are, to focus on what's going on inside. And when we focus on the inside, and it's not looking at our own strength, it's not looking at our own heart, but it's looking deeper, deeper, deeper until we begin to feel the warmth of the fire of God. And we begin to feel that warmth, maybe from a distance, and we're drawn to it. I mean, we're like moths for Jesus, right? We're drawn to the light. We're drawn to the warmth, to the fire, because that's who we are. That's our authentic self, is to be in the fire, with God. We have that story, of course, from the Old Testament. Remember the guys who were in the fire with God? You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They're in the fire with God, right? They're in the furnace. And there's another fourth person who, hmm, looks like a son of God, looks like some divine figure right there with them. And they're in the fire of God. And it no longer becomes Nebuchadnezzar's fire. It becomes God's fire. And that's what the Holy Spirit does for us when we're in times of uncertainty and craziness, is the Holy Spirit can help us and say, now's the moment. You've got an opportunity. And we may blow it, which is typical. You know, We'll blow it. We won't refocus. That's fine. There'll be other moments. God is relentless. The fire of God is relentless to draw us to himself. And so he comes to us and, and shows us and says, you can dance, you can have this dance. Now, we go, dance? Have you seen what it's like outside? <laughs> uh, you know. And God says, you know, how, you know the steps. You know how to do this. And there is something deep inside of us. We know the dance. If we're looking at the fire, if we're paying attention, if we're refocusing, we know the steps. It's different for all of us. You know, for some it's a waltz. For some it's, you know, kind of a, a boogie or whatever. Uh, hopefully this is not in public. But, you know, you're, you're doing the dance, man. You're doing the dance with God. And it's so strange. It's counterintuitive. I mean, it's against all reason or sensibility. What's going on? I shouldn't be dancing. But you're dancing in the rain. Like Fred Astaire. You know? You're, you're, you're against all odds. There's something there that isn't you. It's, it's part of you, but it isn't. And it's that image of God, that dynamic flame that goes so wild, so crazy, so wonderful. So there's a refocusing inward on that fire of God who will, you just want to be with God in that. He lifts you up on a rock when you are able to do that, the funny thing is focusing inward gives you a, an eyesight, a way of seeing the circumstances around you. You're up on the rock. You can see things from a whole new perspective. Oh. Oh. That's different. And there comes a peace because you're not viewing it alone. You're viewing it with the creator of the universe who is firing you up the inside out. And that light is coming out and showing you the reality that is around you. And your response is nothing but joy. I will offer in his tent the sacrifices with shouts, shouts of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. There's that joy. But again, it's still not you. It's the very fire of God. It's the joy of the Lord that is funneling through you, that is leaking out and exploding out all over the place. It's God's joy. You're, you're dancing with joy himself. 
in the midst of this craziness. Where does that come from? It comes from the Lord. The psalmist reiterates in verse 8, Seek my face, my heart said to you. Your face, O Lord, shall I seek. And, and David understands, understands that this is a personal dance. This is a personal time, an intimate time with God. And you go, well, I feel all broken. I can't give anything to God. And you can give God your powerlessness. You can give God your confusion. You can give God your, your anger at stuff. You can give God your confusion, your, your um, lack of faith, your whatever you're going through, you offer that as a sacrifice. But it's an intimate sacrifice. It's a way of seeing God eye to eye. David knew that. I mean, he's in the midst. He's such a radical. He's in the midst of the Jewish people who couldn't even pronounce the name of God because the name of God is too holy. You can't look upon the presence of God because it's, you're just going to disintegrate you. He's too holy. He's too pure. There cannot be contact between you and God. And Dave's... Dave... Dave. <laughs> nah. I'm really close with him, too. And, and he's saying you can see him eye to eye, face to face. David danced with, I mean, read the life of David in First and Second Saint. Read the, David danced with God and, and was personal with God, filled with, I believe, filled with God's spirit, even though theologically, the uh, Holy Spirit wasn't given until after Jesus' death and you know, all this. Thank you, John. But, but I believe, you know, David was filled with the Spirit of God. And he messed up in some big ways. But the fire never left him. And he knew it. Sometimes better than others. But he did. Deep inside, David knew it. And that joy, that victory that sense of, yes, I can walk on the waters with God Almighty. He knew it, he knew it, he knew it. And he lets us know here. And so we're seeking that personal walk, that personal dance with God. And when God picks you up, when God moves you, when God invites you to the dance, you're still enough. Find yourself a quiet place. If you're still enough, you can feel it. You can hear it. You can hear it. Even though my father and my mother have forsaken me, and sometimes we feel like that, the Lord will lift me up. The Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path. And this is a prayer when enemies are surrounding, when there's anything but a level path. God can teach you in the midst of all of this. Again, it's focus. Don't focus on the stuff. Don't focus on the craziness. You focus. You make the choice and you say, I have nothing left in me. I'm overwhelmed. I'm cr and you focus on that presence, the fire that leads you by day, or the cloud that leads you by day, if you want to go Old Testament, and the fire that leads you by night, the, the presence of God that invites you to a dance. And remember, when you enter into the dance of the Lord, you're going somewhere. God's going to take you somewhere. You don't just spin in circles. The Holy Spirit will take you somewhere. And oftentimes, you're not even aware of it. And you're done with the dance, and you go, how did I get here? Oh, my. Because you're so focused in on seeking the face of God, seeking that intimate moment, seeking that movement with God, that you don't know how you got there. And you go, well, I'm out of danger. I have a new perspective. I'm up on a rock. I can see stuff more clearly. Oh, wow. I see my way clear. And then you say, thank you. Because you realize that the whole experience was a gift. A gift from God who loves you and never forsakes you. And so the final verse we have is wait for the Lord.
Wait patiently for the Lord. How many times does it say that in the Bible? Wait for the Lord. You can renew your strength and mount up on wings like eagles, you know. Who knows what may happen? But the idea, and we're not waiting for God to show up. We're waiting for us to show up. <laughs> so in a way, it's kind of waiting for that moment. Because you have to go, you know, we're all made differently, okay? Some of us have to wrestle through this stuff, like, like me. Uh, have to wrestle through it. Others of us are more attentive. God bless you, you know, that you can respond and, and do all that spiritual good dance stuff with God. But some of us have to kind of do our resistance thing and maybe a tantrum here or little stuff here and, you know, whatever we need to do. But eventually there comes that magic moment where we're either too tired to do any more tantrums or resist or we throw in the towel or whatever, however you do it, you come to that point where you say, I can't do this alone. And that's the magic moment. And God says, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. God gets real Pentecostal and, uh, and just says, yes. And finally, you realize, and that's the moment where we have the agency to shift over and dance with the fire. So wait for that. You can't rush this stuff. That's the thing. And God is infinitely patient. You know, we hear about that in the Bible. Uh, God, will, God waits and waits and waits. And then finally, the little light bulb goes off. And we're ready to move. We're ready to dance. So what is your chaos <laughs> this morning? Um, it may be your own personal chaos that uh, is kind of bombarding you right now. Your own, you know, pummeling that's going on. And it, again, it can come from all sorts of different quarters. And usually chaos is fairly loud. There's, there's screams and and, you know, they're calling your name and, and all these different voices just kind of trying to distract you. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more on Thursday this week. <laughs> but the voices come from many different quarters, but they're not from God. Because God talks in a whisper, right? Like Elijah, God talks in a whisper. And so there comes that point where we just get so tired of all the racket. What's your chaos this morning? Is it health? Finances? Maybe it's somebody else in your family that you're concerned about and you feel absolutely powerless against it. You've, you've given them all your advice. You know, maybe it's a kid, maybe it's a cousin or a relative. Or you've given, maybe it's a parent, you know. But you've given them all your best advice, your most biblically Holy Spirit-inspired advice, and you think you're, you're pretty proud of yourself because there's wisdom, man, coming through that, and they don't hear a word. <laughs> In fact, they do just the opposite, right? Maybe that's your chaos. You can't control people. God. And uh, but wherever your chaos is this morning, I'm inviting you, and I, I believe that Jesus is inviting you to take some quiet moments, however you achieve that. You know, take a walk, go for a bike ride. Pretty soon we'll be able to go snowshoeing, right? <laughs> Sorry. Um, but just get, get quiet someplace in the morning, late evening, people go to bed, whatever. Turn off the Lions game. And even though they're winning, and, uh, and just get quiet with God. And just give God all your confusion, all your conflicted emotions, all the craziness that's bouncing around your little pinball machine brain. And bling, 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 bling. And lights going off. And just say, God, I am a lost sheep. Come rescue me. And you'll find that as you get quiet, may not be that exact moment. But wait for it. Wait for it. When you're ready, when your spirit is ready, and usually it's quite unexpected, 
God will come on up and you'll feel the draw of the dance. And you go, this is crazy. This is crazy. Are you crazy enough to dance with the living God because he loves you that much? Amen. We're going to sing a song this morning that kind of talks about that in a little way. And it's about giving praise to God who invites us in a dance in all circumstances of life that we have ample reason to say, thank you, God. Thank you. And it breaks up the chaos in some wonderful ways. Sing with us. Yeah, let's stand up and dance. Dance it out. Shake it up. Crack those knees. <laughs> Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun it's a new day dawning it's time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes bless the lord oh my soul Oh, my soul, I'll worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love. And you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Praise unending. 
ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, I worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. His holy name every day. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. Yes, I worship your holy name. Yes, I worship your holy name. would you say a prayer for us lord god heavenly father you are worthy of all of our worship mm. all of our praise and lord you bring us all of your joy yeah. lord there's ten thousand reasons and more that we could just sing your praises today lord you were faithful then you'll be faithful now lord you've been there my whole life whether i was with you or not, whether I was dancing with you or not. Lord, just light the fire today in our lives and help us just to to recognize the dance that you want us to do in our lives with you, Lord. Lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Facebookers, for joining us this morning and YouTubers later on. Thank you so much for your prayers and support and for being part of a team that gets the good news of Jesus Christ out to this island and beyond. Thank you. We love you. God bless you. And remember to dance with the fire. God loves you very much, and so do I. Have a great week.